Okay, here's a, a video I want, I've been wanting to put out uh, explaining the two levers on the balance assembly. What do they do exactly? Um, and if you have an understanding of what they do, uh, what does that mean in terms of timing and numbers? Um, <clears throat> and how sensitive are they? So here I have a, uh, an anti-magnetic uh, Vostok from Soviet Union. Um, it's, I don't think it's ever been serviced, although it may have. I got it. it I thought it was new old stock. It's fairly nice. Um, as you can see, um, the rate, it's running about four seconds slow, uh, four seconds uh, slow per day, and then it goes to zero. Amplitude is the amount of degrees the balance is moving. Beat error is the millisecond in uh, how centered the balances in relation to the pin that locks in with the pellet fork. I guess that's the best way to explain it. The more centered it is, the more accurate it becomes, I guess. Now, how do you adjust these things and what do they all mean? Uh, the parameters up there on the upper right set for 42 degrees. That is another term. Uh, it's a specification on this type of movement and it flips between the beat rate how many beats per hour 19,800 is the beat rate and then we're going to uh, show you right now it's this thing's running pretty good dial up anytime you move a movement dial up dial down pendant down pendant up on its side it's going to change everything the amplitude the rate um, can I adjust a watch so that it runs perfectly in all aspects, all orientations? No. Um, I don't have the skill, first of all. Secondly, I don't think uh, these movements are designed for that. Uh, some of the Swiss ones, a lot of the Swiss ones, they can maintain that pretty good. Um, and I don't even think, I know I don't have the skill to uh, make a Swiss watch do that. So <clears throat> here, First thing I'm going to show you is how sensitive these levers are. I'm going to attempt to pull this movement in to view here so you have a look of what we're doing here. What are we looking at? Okay, a little cramped for space. Our beat error is adjusted through this lever here. We can move forward or back. That'll adjust the error. And this lever is our rate. Coming back and forth will speed up or slow down that hairspring and the balance. Let's see if I can get a better shot of this. Kind of limited on space here, but. Okay, so we're going to nudge that lever. Let's just nudge it the littlest bit and see what happens to the rate. You might, the movement that I give it may be imperceptible, but I'll move it nonetheless. Okay, let's go this way with it. I think I moved it. How much? I don't know. Uh, when you <clears throat> we flip it back over to the uh, dial up, and we can see our beat error is one point one milliseconds. Maybe I didn't move it at all. I don't think I did. I thought I did. Let's come back here. Okay. Can you all see that? Maybe not. I'm going to give that a little nudge.
Okay, that was a perceptible movement. I'm sure everybody saw that. I saw it, I felt it. So, what did it do to our beat error? How far off is it going to be? Point 0.8 milliseconds. Now, before we had a flat line, straight line with dots coming along. Now you can see they're separated. The more beat error you have, the farther apart these are going to get. That's another indication that your um, your beat error is off. 0.7 milliseconds. Well, how long is 0.7 milliseconds? Uh, a millisecond is a thousandth of a second, I believe. So, mil meaning a thousand. So we are not even a millisecond, not even a thousandth of a second off. We're 0.7 seconds off. In the world of timing and watches, that might be a lot. Is it? I don't know. But I like to have it within 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And with a lot of these, that's definitely achievable. Now, if I move that B or arm the other way, it's go back the exact same distance, it'll say 0.7. How do you know if you're 0.7 over or 0.7 the other way? You don't. You just have to play with it. If you have a uh, time grapher, it's a real nice device. I never thought I would need a time grapher until I bought one. And uh, I love it. It really adds a new dimension to servicing because now you know how, how good is this thing timed. So let's get that back to zero. You should be able to move it back to the to just about where it was before and it's trial and error the nice thing is the time grapher gives you an instant readout it tells you right where it is without this you'll never know where it is coming back to the other side we give it a nudge Hopefully the same amount, but we're going to find out. You'll get a feel for when that slips, when that let get, lets go, that little lever. Sometimes you might feel it move and it actually didn't. Okay, now we're down to 0.2 milliseconds. That's not bad. We're going to let it settle out. Because sometimes it has to, after re reorienting dial up, it will have to rest a little bit. I don't, I don't know how else to explain that. Um, you can see our spacing here. It's getting tighter. They're getting closer and closer. When it's one solid line, we're right in at zero. So we're looking at 0 0.2, 0 0.2 milliseconds. I think I can get that back to. Uh, to zero I had before let's try it I think it moved I don't know these microphones this is basically a microphone that listens to ticks ticking of the watch very sensitive if I were to add another noise from outside it will pick up on that graph um, if I tap the I'm tapping the case and you can see here and down here some things coming up just tapping on the, uh, the time graph for holder picking up those sounds okay maybe I didn't move it at all we're looking at 0.2 still okay uh, another thing about amplitude 300 degrees or more I would consider outstanding for a lot of these Soviet watches some don't even get past 260 or 250. Um, if I was skilled enough to manipulate a spring, a hairspring, 
I could probably do better with that. I'm happy if I have something that maintains 250 degrees. Okay, we're going to nudge this again. Okay, that should have done it, at least a little bit. I hit the start stop button to reset that screen. I think I went too far because we're already 0.6. So we went past that zero. Now we're going to come back. So you can see this, this can be a little time consuming, but it's not doable without a time grapher. And you'll get a feel for where that is when that locks right in. Okay, let's go back the other way because we missed our mark barely perceptible movement but movement nonetheless uh, this is running pretty good 295 degrees 301 back to zero milliseconds and that's a nice flat flat straight line got a little hiccup here who knows why I don't worry about it most of this is a straight flat line 0, 0.0 milliseconds okay we're done with that sounds easy it is just takes time but you need a time grapher I got mine for 200 hours never thought I would need it like I said <laughs> as many as these that I do it's nice to have it around now, how sensitive is that other lever? Now that we have our beat error set, let's change the rate. The theory is a long spring will oscillate slower than a short spring. So if we shorten that hairspring by moving that leader for, which is basically what we're doing, we're shortening it, it will oscillate faster. Therefore, it'll change the rate Let's focus here and there is a plus or minus on that bridge to let you know which way you want to do it so let's get a better shot of that there's plus there's minus. My, my lighting isn't so good. Um, and then there's a little tab right in the middle, a little tab connected to this lever. So I'm going to nudge this that way so it'll push this toward the positive. Let's get a good shot so you can see. How much I'm going to nudge that and how sensitive this is. This was running about two seconds fast. Let's speed it up even more. Now that was a pretty good jump. You saw that. That was a good jump. How, how far of a jump is it? How much faster is this going to run now? 64 seconds. And you can see that graph is on the way up. This would be very fast, and then slower and slower and slower and slower. Level would be zero, and then we're going to go the other way to point it down this way. You can see our zero millisecond beat error is still consistent. So that hasn't changed, but that little tiny movement just made this run 51 seconds fast. 53 seconds, that's, that's almost a minute. <clears throat> a minute fast in one day. That's not good. That's that's too much. That's how sensitive that lever is. So let's come back the other way. And we are going to come back. We're going to slow this down. We're going to exaggerate it. We are going to slow that down to show which way does that graph go. Okay. So we come back the other way. I'm going to slow it down. A 
we are essentially lengthening that hairspring and that'll slow it down. That will oscillate less. Okay, 0.9 seconds. Okay, now we're going negative. Now we're slow by 4 seconds, 7 seconds. And you can see the graph. It's on its way down. The steeper that graph this way, the slower it's going. Opposite of the last one we had. So I'm just going to do a quick nudge. Really slow us down. So you can see that graph change. And hopefully this will explain a lot of how this works, how a time grapher works. Now that lever you can adjust by timing your clock to a known source that's working over 24 hours. Imagine making an adjustment every 24 hours, how long that would take. You'd, you'd take weeks and months to get this timed. With a time grapher, we're going to get it done in 15 minutes and it's real time. It shows you exactly. There you go, 39 seconds, 40 seconds. The graph is on its way down. So now we're going to come back and we're going to level this off and that'll let us know how, how well this is working. And if you're going to do a few movements a month, a week, if you have a bunch that you want to service or you want to tinker with, uh, the last thing I bought was a time grapher because it was just it was just so cool and I, I got quite a few that I'm servicing that need service and I like I like having this so we're gonna come back around nudge it flip it back over to dial up see what happens so it looks like we went a little too far we're nine seconds fast dial up no well, nine seconds fast eleven seconds fast that's not too bad that's pretty respectable I think these are regulated to run within twenty seconds give or take 20 seconds fast or 20 seconds slow. Um, to me, the average is zero, so set it to zero and see where it have uh, where it ends up. I like to let it run through the screen a uh, one time. Uh, it might settle in, you know. Uh, once the watch is sitting still, it's going to run straighter uh, for you than if it was on your wrist moving around. Once you start moving around, all bets are off. Your your rate is going to change throughout the day. Um, but that's that's life. That's how it is. Hopefully, it averages out to uh, running pretty consistent for you. Here we are, four seconds fast. It's not so bad. Can we get it to zero? Sure. We can. Am I going to bother? Probably not. Five seconds fast, that's fine with for regulating something like this. Okay, hopefully you learned something with this.